launch countdown began at the T minus 43 hour mark at 5 p.m. on Monday. For this launch, there are a total of 30 hours and 57 minutes of built in hold time. Crew is undergoing suit up, and here is Commander Creighton giving us a uh, good afternoon, and he's essentially ready to go at this point. And there is pilot Ken Reitler, also essentially suited up and ready for flight. Sam Gamar, mission specialist. Mission specialist Mark Brown. And mission specialist Jim Buckley. And we're now at three hours and counting. Next people to come to the pad will be the astronauts leaving the astronaut quarters here in about another 10 minutes or so. And all of the scheduled activities today for the crew have been right on the money. And here come the astronauts led by Commander Creighton. Tim Reitler, James Buckley, James Brown, and Sam Gamar. They're in the van now, accompanied by their usual security team. Crew now getting uh, off the elevators and now going on to the orbiter access arm. Looking ahead to our remaining mission specialists that will be entering the orbiter. Mark Brown and James Buckley are remaining to be seated. The seating arrangement in the, in the crew compartment, uh, Commander Creighton, of course, is sitting in the left front seat, and Pilot Ken Reitler is in the right front seat. Right now, the peak wind reported at the last balloon was 70 knots at 40,000 feet. All activities are continuing to go well. We're not working any problems either on the vehicle side, the payload side. We now have the access arm retraction underway. Discovery Houston, com check, air to ground one and two, simul. Houston Discovery, Addy, read over, Simo. Discovery Houston, read you loud and clear, Simo, J.O. And I got you the same. Fuel cell systems now tra transferring to use of their own internal reactants. Gaseous oxygen vent hood now being retracted. 
Orbit are now on internal power. Ken Reitler has reported that he has now completed the clearing of the caution and warning memory system. No unexpected errors. T minus two minutes, the flight crew has been instructed to close their visors. Sound suppression water system has started. T minus 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven. Go for main engine start. Three main engines up and burning. Three, two, one, zero, and liftoff of the space shuttle Discovery and the upper atmosphere research satellite. Studying the Earth's environment from space. Roger, roll, Discovery. Mission Control Houston now controlling the flight of Discovery. Roll program complete. Discovery now in a heads down position on course for a 57 degree inclination. minute 10 seconds. Discovery is now at altitude of 45,000 feet. Discovery Houston, go at throttle up. Roger, go at throttle up. All three engines aboard Discovery now back up at 104% of operating uh, pressure. Three good hydraulic systems aboard the vehicle and three good electrical fuel cells. Downrange distance, 10 nautical miles. Roger, read you the same. Solid rocket booster separation from Discovery. Time now, 2 minutes and 20 seconds. Discovery now, 30 miles from the uh, launch site. Discovery Houston, 2-engine tail. Roger, 2-engine tail. Discovery can now reach Zaragoza, Spain in the event of a single engine failure. However, all three engines are still operating at 104%. Three good hydraulic systems and three good electrical systems aboard the vehicle. Discovery is now at an altitude of 219,000 feet, downrange from the launch site 50 nautical miles, traveling 4,700 feet per second. Max White. Go. You go. Booster. We're go. Bale's going. NTD Houston flight. We're we'll go for launch. I copy. Thank you. Launch director NTD. I copy uh, NTD and we'll call uh, launch management at this time. Copy. Payload operation director. Payload's ready to go, Bob. I copy engineering director. Engineering is go, Bob. Copy. Safety and quality director. Safety and quality is go, Bob. Copy. K Pilot launch director. Fifteen. Ten. Yeah, let's go. Front main engine starts. Vents open. T-Zero, SRB ignition. Lift off confirmed. Roll program, Houston. Roger, roll, Discovery. Flight guidance. Go ahead. See a good roll. Thank you. Throttle down for you at 89. Throttle down for you at 67. Fidel confirms throttles. Discovery Houston, com check Simo. Uh, I got you loud and clear. Houston, how do you read us? Roger, read you the same.
Lights are be set. 103 converged. Stand by for two engine tail. Mark. Discovery Houston, two engine tail. Roger, two engine tail. Discovery Houston, single engine Zaragoza 104. Copy, single engine Zaragoza 104. Next flight. Good flight. How are we doing the APUs? We were looking. We had a good Miko Houston. And in by for seven. Roger that, Discovery. ET set. Okay. Nominal Mako. Homes are not required. And we're no go for the ET photo DTO. Because of lighting? Right. Capcom. Discovery Houston. Nominal Mako. No Ohms 1 required. And no go for the ET photo DTO. Okay. Copy. No Ohms 1 required. And a no go for the photo DTO. That's good copy, JL. 30 seconds to Tedris. Copy. Handing up at 10 minutes. That uh, picture did show that the right-hand door of Discovery was uh, opened and the left-hand door now uh, being opened. Switching cameras now to the right-hand side of the orbiter looking toward the tail as the left-hand door uh, opens. Flight Director Jeff Bannell now pulling the room to get a go for orbit ops. That's a phase in which the crew can stay on orbit for the remainder of the flight. Rigid, load off, brakes are on, good grapple. Okay, good. PTR stop. Flight payloads. Payloads. The URs are sensors have found the errors. Outstanding. Open so far that we've made it. Okay, that ought to be done. Yeah, I'll just.
you say? Thanks, we appreciate that. One interesting note, we've been using the uh, elbow camera uh, to see the ROEU, and when we tried to look at it today, we uh, found that it was obscured by the insulation on the arm. So, uh, SIM didn't work real well, huh? Right. We're just being flexible. Okay, I'm ready for it. We're getting camcorder back up? Yeah. Okay. And a right hole. Okay. Looking really good, Lord. Thanks. Did you get any lighting, Tim? Negative. now is of the uh, Goddard Payload Operation Control Center at the uh, Goddard Space Flight Center where controllers are proceeding uh, nicely with the in-bay checkout and are very, very happy with uh, the progress of things at this point. Discovery Houston for Sam. Things are all relative, GNC. My GNC looks real good right now. Okay. Go drift right now. Okay, at this point, we'll uh, go ahead and recommend that. Uh, we're go to pick up with release and deploy. He is go for free drift. Discovery Houston, the POC is ready to start commanding the solar ray release. You're go for free drift. Okay, we're in free drift. I thought it was 16 feet. 16 feet and come back? I believe it. It went well past the elbow camera. Would you like to have been riding on the end of that? Uh, roger that. And we have a beautiful view of that. Great. I'm not sure we need any motor drive there, payloads. Milestone payloads. Looks beautiful, right? Absolutely. Start moving in. Uh, let me know. Okay, they're eagle now. Eagle, yeah, right there. 
It's going to take me an hour to review all these pictures. And Discovery Houston, did you copy uh, go for release? And also we need IMU number three deselected. Okay, we copy that time. Go for release and uh, deselect IMU three. Capcom looking like a good release, good step one to us. Discovery Houston looked like a great release and step one. Congratulations. It's on its way. Our mission to planet Earth. Uh, 
looking out the uh, side commander's window is uh, in the direction of our motion. So it's kind of like a preview of everything yet to come, looking straight out here. And right now, uh, looking right down the, uh, the boot of Italy, there are enough cities that are positioned to launch. It's a lot easier to work with. Though. Okay, mine's ready to roll. Seems like it. Yeah, it is. It's gone. Give me a bit. This is Mission Control. Buckley and Mark Brown are uh, assembling the first of the structural test articles for today's uh, run on the mid-deck zero gravity dynamics experiment. This is called a an erectable truss. That means that the crew builds it or assembles it.
Say something witty. Shoot me like a horse. What do you mean, hope? It's shaking. The tension looks good on all of them. I'm surprised. It's characterizing the uh, radiation. I'm going to slowly pan up on you and then look down at the little buggers. What's that, Jeff? Shot magazine. Okay, now I'm going to zoom in. I'm all of them. Okay, move your hand back out of the way. Well, this is good. You can see them running around. There's a lot of urine on the top of this. Why don't you let that thing go for a second? Okay, come back to it. Thank you. And I like 12 ounces in mine, please. Okay, there's the first eight. Here comes four more.
Marsha, are you getting our downlink of the Aurora? Yeah, Mark, it's great. Wish it was in color. What's it look like to you? Jim said it's basically green. He's a Marine. The uh, glow over the uh, forward bulkhead of Discovery and occasional flashes are indications of uh, reaction control system thrusters firing to maintain attitude as well as uh, propel Discovery uh, forward and higher. Discovery Houston looked like a good burn, no trim required, and believe it or not, we saw the jets fire from the Charlie camera. It's just beautiful. There's lots of bumping and thumping going on up here, I'll tell you that. Oh, a lot of shaking going on, huh? This is Mission Control Houston. This uh, television view from the payload bay cameras aboard uh, Discovery is not a star field, but uh, the uh, lights of city below as uh, Discovery crosses uh, over the North Sea and, and uh, across the coast of the northern part of the Netherlands and uh, Germany. Sam says this is exactly what it looks like. Yeah, thanks. Looking out the uh, side commander's window is uh, in the direction of our motion. So it's kind of like a preview of everything yet to come, looking straight out here. And right now, uh, looking right down the, uh, the boot of Italy, there are enough cities that are positioned along the coast all the way down the, the peninsula as you can uh, clearly make out the, uh, the definition of where the land is and the water is jet black. So it's easy to tell the outline of all the, the uh, countries. Roger that, Ken, and we just took payload bay cameras because uh, we wanted to take a look for ourselves and we can see that. It's amazing. Quite a uh, lightning storm right off of Naples right now. Yeah, we see that. Cities of Venice, Rome, Naples, Genoa, all clearly visible. Yeah, it looks like a pretty big lightning storm. And there's another lightning storm right off just north of the Straits of Messina. Well, it's beautiful here. It must really be spectacular up there. It's hard to believe sitting over here uh, that you can look on the horizon and see the uh, lights from the fires down there in Kuwait. That is pretty amazing. The residuals look real good. <laughs> That's an excellent burn. That's a superior burn. There's no doubt about that one. Residuals are excellent. Uh, good burn. Okay, and Capcom, uh, follow along with that. Uh, we saw a good burn. We like the residuals. Uh, yes, if you can hear us, uh, burn's completed on time. Roger, we copy. We saw a good burn with excellent residuals. And for the modesters there, we need for them to proceed to protocol number 30. 
And they can start that now and continue it even during the maneuver back to uh, GG. Okay, we'll maneuver back to GG. Okay, we understand protocol 30, and just as a data point, uh, did break surface during the burn. Just uh, in the view to the right-hand bottom portion of the picture is uh, Chicago, near the southern portion of Lake Michigan. The word is, we have great views of Houston. Okay, thanks. Thank you. This view from Discovery, uh, looking from the north to the south, stretching uh, all the way from the Lake Michigan area all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. Atlanta is now in the uh, middle right-hand portion of the picture. Just coming into view is Tampa uh, in Florida. Discovery is presently at an altitude of 309 nautical miles. Looking southward now, uh, the entire state of Florida becomes visible. The larger cities are evident by the uh, brightness, Jacksonville, Orlando, Tampa, and then Miami in the southern portion.
Orbiter now initiating the first roll reversal. That's a roll reversal to the right uh, to dissipate uh, excess energy of, of the orbiter. Discovery's altitude now 152,000 feet, range 280 nautical miles. Time to touch down 10 minutes, 40 seconds. Discovery Houston, transfer state vector to the BFS. Roger, transfer state vector to the BFS, inward. And uh, we're back to about 1,300 low at the 90, converging back to normal. Slightly low at the 90 and converging. Discovery, we see you slightly low at the 90 and converging. Main gear touchdown and nose gear touchdown. Discovery rolling out on Edwards runway 22. Glad to have you back, Discovery. Your mission will pave the way for a better understanding of our planet Earth. PNC. Congratulations no on a job. Well done, J.O. CPS. No deltas. Eagle. Thank you. No deltas. Ecom. None. Uh, Enco. No deltas. Flight. Mac. No deltas. Flight. Go ahead, Ecom. Okay, we've got about five minutes of cooling here on the RADS. First ammonia controller is going to be ammonia B to prod GPC. Okay, and we'll await your call. Uh, we're ready for the uh, ETM vehicle doors to come up. We're standing by, flight. Okay. No, we're standing by. He's got to go. Flight Inco, we're on an upper antenna now. Okay. Crew transport vehicle now moving into position. Discovery now uh, looking over the vehicle as is uh, fairly routine after each flight. Greeting the crew is the Dryden Flight Research Facilities uh, di Center Director, Ken Soleil.
STS uh, 48 crew members from left to right, Mission Specialist Mark Brown, Sam Gamar, Pilot Ken Reitler, Mission Specialist Jim Buckley, and Commander J.O. Creighton.